So questions from the homework. Anything you'd like me to go over? Yes, Kara. Love to do number. Is that the one with the P's and the Q's and the big nasty one that I gave? Yep. I'll save that for last. Anything before number 10? Yeah. 5F? Yeah. Okay, 5F, 6C. And A and B? Okay. That, by the way, I am going to say 5 and 6 are really the skill that you need out of this lesson. The exponents review was important because we're going to be looking at how exponents behave in a very different way for the remainder of the unit, and it'll make sense if you fit it into your already learned exponent review uh, rules. Uh, but what we're really going to be doing quite a bit of is changing bases. So uh, 5F. Um, I looked at this and I said, well, they want me to write this as base 4 over 3. The problem is the 4 is on top, and Carly, that's a 3 cubed on top. By the way, hopefully you're starting to memorize some of those exponents. And that's a 4 on the bottom, 4 cubed, but that's a 3 on the bottom over here. How the heck could I get the 4 on top and the 3 on the bottom? Well, first thing I did was this. I said, okay, this is 3 over 4 cubed to the x plus 2. Is that okay so far, kiddo? It would be wonderful if there was something that I could do that would act like, oh, an elevator, as it were, that would somehow uh, cause a number to, say, change levels. Where? As an exponent. I think if I, instead of putting a 3 right here as an exponent, if I put a negative 3 right there, that would be automatically causing the 4 to move to the top, the 3 to move to the bottom, and now I have it as base 4 over 3. Did you follow that little reasoning there? I did it in one step here. I should have maybe written it out more. Oh, and now I can go, oh, I have a power to a power. Uh, this is all going to end up being 4 thirds to the power of negative 3x minus 6. So if you're ever trying to get a base to match what they want, and it's uh, reciprocal, the top is on the bottom and the bottom is on the top, uh, elevate, uh, introduce a negative inside your exponent, and that will cause the numbers to change levels. Normally, we got rid of the negative to cause the and cause the numbers to change levels, but in this case, I have to introduce one. Is that okay? Five C, and I'll let you try A and B on your own. Six C, sorry, I said five C. Six C. Ready, Eric? What base do they want me to go here? Uh, what's one quarter as base four? Four to what power is one over four? Ah, thank you. Elev yeah, this is definitely four to the negative one. What uh, 16, ignore the one over for now. 16 is four to what power? One over 16 is four to what power? Yes. That's the first thing I would do. Uh, then I would say, hey, I have a power to a power. Mr. Duick says take care of that first, almost always. So this is going to end up being 4 to the negative 1 times 4 to the negative 8 plus 2x. Is that correct, Eric? I think. Yes, 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 yes. I looked in the back. Oh, you know what? There's one more thing I can do. This is why my answer doesn't quite match the back. What's my base right here? What's my base right here? You're saying my bases are the same? Uh, am I multiplying? Then what do I do when my bases are the same and I'm multiplying? What do I do with exponents back in grade 9? Adam. I can rewrite this as 4 to the... And when I say Adam, what we're really doing is we're gathering like terms. There's no x's over here to add to the x's over here. Uh, but a negative 1, take away 8, is a negative 9 plus 2x, although I'll bet in the back they probably wrote that as 2x minus 9 because that looks prettier. Okay, That's what you're trying with these ones as well. So if I'm writing that, that's going to be a 3 squared and a 3 cubed, and I'll get rid of power to a power, and then I can actually add the exponents because they're the same base. 10c, no, 10. This is far harder than anything you'll come across, which means it's good practice. Again, the goal is we try and find the test easier, I hope. Hmm. Oh, uh, power to a power, Mr. Duick said. 
always do that first. So I got an exponent outside the brackets. So this one half is going to go onto there and onto there and onto there. And this one fifth is going to go onto there and onto there. Okay. It's going to be 64 to the negative one half. P to the, what's a positive times a negative, Tara? It's going to be a negative up there. What's two times a half? Or what's half of two? What's half of two? Don't shrug your shoulder, girl. What's half of two? Oh, thank you. That's what two times a half is. It's half of. Um, what's a negative times a negative, Kara? So it's going to be Q to a positive number. The real question is, because your brains are dead right now and you've forgotten your fractions, how do I multiply two-thirds times one-half? I took care of the negatives. Multiplying fractions is the easiest of all the fraction operations. Multiplying fractions is very simply top times top, bottom times bottom. That's it. Top times top, two over, bottom times bottom. Two over what? Ready? Top times top, two over, bottom times bottom. What's three times two, girl? This is two over six. In lowest terms, what's two over six? This is going to be to the one-third. Multiplying fractions is the easiest fraction operation, folks. Top times top, bottom times bottom. Adding and subtracting is when you got to find the stupid common denominator thing. Um, over. Kara, have you got a graphing calculator yet? Okay. Otherwise, I was going to show you another way that you can do this on your graphing calculator. Anyways. Um, letter P down here, Kara. Negative times positive, it's going to be negative. Five times the fifth, you ready? It's really five over one, because five is a fraction, times the fifth. You know, multiplying fractions is the easiest operation. It's top times top, bottom times bottom. You get five over five, which in lowest terms is with the negative still kicking around. Q to the positive times negative is negative. Let's see if I can do 10 over 1 times 1 over 5 without writing it out. What would 10 over 1 times 1 over 5 be? In lowest terms, please. I know you can. I think 2, yes? So step 1 is getting to that line right there. Then Mr. Duick said the next thing we always do is elevator. The 64 to the 1 half is going to move to the bottom. This P is going to move to the bottom. The Q to the 1 third stays there. This P is going to move to the top. And this Q squared is going to move to the top. Is that okay? Piece of cake. Now, are you ready? Uh, by the way, I notice how many letter P's do I have on top? One. How many on the bottom? One. How many left? How many P's on top? One. How many on the bottom? One. How many left? None. Let's do that. Let me feel better. Now, I tried to hint this to you last day. I said one half as an exponent is one worth remembering. To the one half power means something very, very specific. It means square root. Memorize one half and one third. What you want to do from now on is if you see one half as an exponent, Brett, I also want you to right away see square root of that number. Or if you see one third as an exponent, I want you to also see cube root of that number. Because this is really the square root of 64, which in your head the square root of 64 is. Ah, that's going to be an 8 down there. Now you know where that 8 came from in the answer. Uh, by the way, look up. Wrong. Yes? Wrong, yes. Did the P's cancel? Wrong, yes. I already I know the answer is D. I, like I've been trying to tell you in multiple choice questions, often you don't need to do the whole question. However, are these two bases the same? So I can add the exponents. What is two plus a third? Now here I do need a common denominator. Yuck. Instead of a two, I'm going to write... Is that still a 2? 
6 over 3, is that technically still a 2? And do I have a common denominator? Do you know what when I add the exponent 6 thirds and 1 third is? You know how many thirds? 6 thirds plus 1 thirds. How many thirds? Did you say 7? Hard for me to read your lips. Yeah. That's why. That's right. Shouldn't it be what? Q? Yeah, that. Sorry. After all that about getting the P's to cancel. <laughs> Thank you. I need to mind my P's and Q's. <laughs> okay, that's not that funny. I thought it was. Is that okay? Am I going to give you one that other? No. Would I expect all of you to follow that explanation? Yeah. In fact, I'm hoping most of you are going, oh, I could have got that. I just didn't think right. Stubborn and clever is the phrase you've already heard me say a few times. Let's jump to where I think Math 12 truly begins. This is probably brand new, unless Mr. Gerard or Mr. Kamorgi snuck it into Math 11, which is possible, but I don't know. Lesson 2, which is page uh, 99, 97. Warm-up number one says, review, simplify that by converting each term to a common base. Did I do a question for Eric where we converted, and for Carly, where we converted some stuff to a common base? Can we call that our review? What we're going to look at today are two new types of equations. The first is an equation that has a, now it says a rational exponent. A rational exponent, another word for rational is... Fractional exponent. What we're going to look at today, Asar, is equations that have fractions as exponents on the x's. Like example one. Can you all, at a glance, recognize what I mean? That has a fractional or rational exponent. That has a fractional or rational exponent. They kind of stand out, Vlad. Stay here. I'm going to scroll ahead real quick. Hey, that's got a fractional or rational exponent. So does that. So does that. They stand out. Uh, this does not. That's not a fraction. That's going to be a different kind of equation. But when we have a fractional exponent, what's the procedure? Well, here's what it says. The first thing you do is you raise both sides to the reciprocal power of the exponent. So what? Watch. Example 1 says, solve for x in the following, x equals negative 4 thirds, or x to the negative 4 thirds equals 81. Bear with me, someone at the door. Someone's going to bring a big carton of Cheerios or something? Yeah. There we win. Okay. Ready? Here's what it said to do. Raise both sides to the reciprocal power, which sounds confusing, but it's a really easy trick. This is a great trick. What's my exponent right here? Isabel, read it out to me. What's the exponent? What's the reciprocal of negative 4 over 3? Negative still. What's the reciprocal of negative 4 over 3? Negative. I'm going to put this side to negative 3 over 4. Hang on, I'm going to try writing that so you can see it a bit better. This side to negative 3 over 4, and this side to negative 3 over 4. It's got to be both sides, because remember your graded equation solving? Ellen, you have to do the same thing to both sides all the time. Plus 5 to both sides, by both sides by 2. Both sides to the reciprocal power. Now, why is that so nice? Watch. Ready, Kara, my love? You were the one who asked me this earlier. This will work out perfectly. I'm kind of glad you asked number 10. It leads into this. Do I have a power to a power over here? Say yes. So I multiply the exponents. What's a negative times a negative? Positive. And then how do you multiply fractions? Top times, bottom times. Can you see you get 12 over 12? See it? Which is what in lowest terms? In fact, don't write this down. It works out to that. Do I really need to put a 1 there, or isn't there automatically always a 1 automatically there? In fact, by doing that, the x is by itself. Not bad. Uh, I drop the equal sign down. Now on the right side, I have 81 to the negative 3 quarters. Okay. Now what? What would I do with that answer? 
Fla uh, not yet. I never said to do flower power first. I told you there was always something I did first. Elevator first. I would go like this. 1 over 81 to the positive 3 quarters. Now I would, yes, I agree, flower power, as it were, strangely enough. This is going to be 1 over uh, the what root of what to the what. It's either the cube root of 81 to the 4th or the 4th root of 81 to the 3rd. 4th root of 81 to the 3rd. And I'm just going to move this over so I have more room to write. Perfect. No calculators because I would feel comfortable giving this to you on the non-calc section of your test. And I've already told you, I'll say it again, though, your test is going to have two parts, a non-calc and a calc calculator section. Cover up the 3 in your mind. What is the 4th root of 81? 3 cubed. I heard it. There you go. Except why don't I continue in black so that it just makes more sense. Why so change colors partway through a question. When do I do that? When there is a fractional exponent. Both sides to the reciprocal power. B, is there an exponent? Yeah. Now, first of all, what if there had just been a squared there? What would you do? This one you already knew how to solve. If there was a squared there, how do you get rid of a squared square root? If there was a cube there, how do you get rid of a cube? cube root? So that one we showed you in grade 9 and 10 and 11. Now we're saying, what if there's a fractional exponent there? No problem. Put both sides... To the, what's the reciprocal of 3 over 2? And if you do that, these will always cancel because it's always going to be 6 over 6 or 8 over 8 or 12 over 12. It's always going to end up being an exponent of 1. In fact, in this one, you're going to get 3x minus 5 all to the 1. Dominique, do I need to write all to the 1? Uh, equals 27 to the two-thirds. Now what? No negative exponents, so now what? The stupid rhyme that I gave you, flower, but yeah, write it as a, I mean, technically write it as a radical. Okay, so I'm gonna re drop the three x minus five down. And this is the, well, I know the 27 goes there. The what root of what to the what? Cube root of 27 squared. If I'm evaluating these in my head, I never do the exponent. I cover up the 2 in my mind. So right now, I don't see the 2. Cube root of 27 squared. This is 3x minus 5 equals 9. And now I'm going to argue that's math 8 in terms of level of difficulty. I think in math 8 is when you do the Plus and then uh, how would I get the x by itself here? Plus five to both sides. Divide by three. X equals fourteen over three. The only problem, Joel, is this is a little awkward to check in your head. You could go back and check your answer. Certainly, I probably could for uh, this one here, maybe. But the message is, be a little uber careful, a little more careful. Don't make sloppy mistakes. So the first type of equation is where the exponent is a fraction. The second type of equation is called an exponential equation. An exponential equation is where the x is an exponent. We have never done those before, ever. We have never given you x's up here till today. Never given you x's up here till today. So here it is, a brand new equation. How does it say to solve this? What's our approach here? It says, use the following procedure. First thing, write both sides with the same base. That's why, Eric, I snuck that in last lesson. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to equate the exponents. And then the third thing we're going to do is solve. It's much easier to do it than to explain it. 
Example 2, A. Justin, what's the base on the left-hand side? What's the base on the right-hand side? Do I have one base equals one base? Say yes. Are the bases the same? Then I can reasonably assume, here's our reasoning, Ryan. If 5 to something equals 5 to something, the somethings must be equal to each other. If 5 to something equals 5 to the something else, even if they look different, they must be the same. We call that equating the exponents. If I have one base equals one base and my bases are the same, I can equate the exponents. And I'm going to argue, Ryan, that's math 8, that, that equation that we end up with. How would I get the x by itself? I see from both sides, they what? And then watch me through on one side. Divide by two. Can you see the answer is going to be 2 in your heads? Or, like, if you can, great in your homework. If you can solve these in your head and get the x by itself, good. We'll show our work in our notes so that when we're studying, you know what the heck you did. Uh, minus 3. Actually, I'm not showing my work. I'm just showing the step, aren't I? And then divide by 2. Joel, what's our strategy? Try and write it as one base equals one base. And if the bases are the same, we equate the exponents. Are you ready? Let's look at B, Joel, my friend. Are my bases the same right now? What's my base on the left? What's my base on the right? Ah, it's not 343. At least that's not what I see. I see 7 to something. Ah, I can rewrite this as 7 to the x minus 2 equals 3. Uh, three 7 to the third power. This, this. This is why I told you you had to memorize those exponents that I gave you last day on that previous page that we listed out. This is why you need to know these powers. Maria, do I have one base equals one base? Say yes. Are my bases the same? Say yes. Then I can equate the exponents. On my next line, I can say, hey, x minus 2 has to be 3. Maria, what does x equal in your head showing no work? With authority, please, without hesitation and a loud, strong voice. Negative 5? No, no, no. Don't I plus 2 to both sides? 5, right? Yeah. Did you say negative 5 or did I miss your... I'm sorry. Maybe. Okay, 5, right? Right? Don't make that... Don't do the math 12 right and then trip on the math 8. We don't want to do that. This is so much fun. Let's do another one. Okay. Mitsu, what's my base on the left-hand side? What's my base on the right-hand side? Don't say 81 because it's not. I don't see an 81 there. What is it? Ah, this is really 3 to the 5x minus 1 equals... 3 to the 4th to the 3x. I need to tidy up the right-hand side a bit, Trevor. The 4 and the 3x, I need to tidy those up. This is going to be 3 to the 5x minus 1 equals 3 to the... Mitsu, what does this simplify to? When I, not just 12. 12x. Mitsu, my friend. Do I have one base equals one base? Are my bases the same? Then I can equate the exponents. My actual equation that I'm solving is 5x minus 1 equals 12x. Okay, now we're grade 9 because there's x's on both sides. How would I solve this? I'll tell you what I would not do. I would not minus 12x from both sides. That would be silly. Because then I'd be leaving with a 0 on the other. I'd get confused. I would minus 5x from both sides, right? And I'll get negative 1 equals 7x. Mitsu, get the x by itself. How? Ah, thank you. Negative 1, 7. Really, you need the calculator? 
Ah, no calculator, put it down. I would give you this on the non-calc section of your test, no problem. And since you walked right into my snare, Brett, let's pick on you, my friend, since you need to be awake anyways. What's my base on the left-hand side? Now, on the right, I see a 27 and a root 3. I'm going to write those all as 3s. This one already is, so I'll just drop it down. What's 27? I agree. What's the square root of 3 as an exponent? I think Mr. Duick went ballistic about 10 minutes ago telling you to remember this. That's when you see root 3, you always instantly also want to see 3 to the 1 half. They are interchangeable. Do I have one base equals one base? Say no. I don't. I got two bases still on the right-hand side. Two threes. I better combine them. What do I do when I'm multiplying and my bases are the same? What do I do with the exponents? So this is going to be 3x to the... Hmm. What is 3 plus 1 half as an improper fraction? Now, you lost about half my class. Thank you very much for not letting me down. For the rest of you who suck at fractions, Brett is at least mediocre at fractions. But the rest of you, for those of you who suck at fractions, look up. You have to find a common denominator to add fractions. And 3 over 1 is 6 over 2. And so Brett said, that's the same as 3 to the 7 over 2. It is. Now do I have 1 base equals 1 base? Are my bases the same? Then I can equate the exponents. And this one's kind of nice at the end because I don't have to get the x by itself. It already is. Is that okay, Brie? Do you want to get a little lower, Ellen? You can. I got a table that's a little shorter. I can dig up if you want to. Or if you want to lay down, totally good with that. Okay. Turn the page. D is much more like the level you're going to get on your test. I like D. I like E. I like D. I like E. I'll be completely honest. A, B, and C, too easy. I don't even call those C minus. So take a close look at D. What base do I want to write both of these as? 3. 3. So let's see. Now I'm going to be way more careful. I'm going to show more work. This is a much more difficult question. Uh, I'm going to write this as 3 to the third to the x minus 2 equals... The exponent over here is going to be x plus 3. What's 1 over 81? 3 to what power? Ah, elevator. Good. There's the 27, and there's the 1 over 81. Is that okay, Eric, so far? Now, power to a power. This is going to be 3 to the 3x minus 6. And this is going to be 3 to the negative 4x minus 12. Alex, do I have one base equals one base? Are my bases the same? then I can equate the exponents. I think, Carly, I would plus 4x to both sides. And at the same time, I would plus the 6 over to the other side because I can do both of those steps at once because I'm at 12. Plus the 6 over. Carly, how would I get the x by itself? There you go.
one more. And we are fini. We are done. We are complete. Trevor glanced at the clock and said, wow, that was fast. Hey, time flies when you're having fun doing math. How can it not? This is like being in Disneyland. It's just never enough time. What base, by the way, E, this I would consider B plus, maybe even A minus. So the first one I would consider C plus-ish, reasonable level. This one I would consider a little trickier. What's my base on the right-hand side? On the right-hand side, what's my base? Question, Eric? What's my base on the right hand, on the right? Six over five, I'm pretty sure that's what I want to put on the left. Uh-oh, on the top, that 125, I can't write that as a six. Uh, I can't write it as a five. On the bottom, that 216, Carly, I can't write that as a five. Wait a minute, this is an awful lot like the question that you asked me from the homework where we said, well, it almost works, except we want the top to go to the bottom and the bottom to go at the top. In fact, we want the numbers to go on an elevator, as it were, perhaps. Ah, so how can I write this as 6 over 5? What is 125 to the 216? Well, first of all, 5 is 3, to, uh, sorry, 125 is 5 to the what? 3. 216 is 6 to the what? 3. So what do I want to put here? Not quite a 3. Ah, uh, a negative 3. And then the x, uh, the negative x over 4 drops down. And this is 6 over 5. Is that okay, Ellen? Uh, power to a power. By the way, this is a negative 3. What's negative 3 as a fraction? Negative 3 over what? What's it? any number always over 1? Because I'm going to be multiplying two fractions together. Kara, you know how I multiply two fractions together? It's the easiest operation. Top times, bottom times. In fact, I think we're going to get this. 6 over 5 to the power of 3x over 4. Is that right? Negative times negative, positive. Top times top, bottom times bottom. Uh, equals 6 over 5 to the 3x minus 3. Spencer, do I have one base equals one base? Are my bases the same? Then I can equate the exponents. I can write this as 3x over 4 equals 3x minus 3. Get them later when people work indoor voices. Ah, fraction! No, relax, relax, relax. Hopefully, in Math 9, you learned that when you have a fractional equation, there's an easy way to make all of the fractions vanish. Remember how? What? I'm going to multiply everything by the denominator. I'm going to multiply everything. I'm going to multiply everything. I'm going to multiply everything by 4, by 4, by 4. And I always, when I'm multiplying, put it in front. Because if I put the 4 on this side, what will it look an awful lot like? An exponent. And that's going to confuse me because I'm in an exponent unit right now. So when I'm multiplying, I always put it in the front. Why is this so nice, Maria? Because here I get how many 4s on top? 1. How many 4s on the bottom? 1. How many left and where? None. In fact, I get... 3x equals 12x minus 12. I minus 12x from both sides. And I get negative 9x equals negative 12. I get x equals negative 12 over negative 9, although what's a negative divided by a negative, Dan? And 12 over 9 in lowest terms? Now, you could conceivably check that answer. This is why I said, though, we've reached a level where going, level where going back and checking answers is almost more trouble than it's worth. The message I have for you is just be really paranoid and careful when you're doing these. Don't make sloppy mistakes.
check your work. So, two new equations today, Justin. Fractional equations, also called rational equations, and exponential equations. Put your pencils down. What we're going to ask ourselves now for the remainder of the unit is, okay, I get this exponential equations, Mr. Duick, where the x is up as an exponent. That's pretty good so far. I'm stalling right now. By, ah, there. Boy, I hit that quite a while ago, and that program wasn't opening up. What we're going to ask ourselves is, what if instead of this, what if instead it's that? Can I write a 5 as a 12 or a 12 as a 5 using exponents? Not yet. Not yet. And to get around this, we're going to have to invent an entirely, well, define an entirely new mathematical operation called the logarithm, the log button on your calculator that you may have seen and wondered what the heck it was for. Having said that, hugely useful to be able to solve these equations. We are going to do some very cool applications. We'll look at half-life, we'll look at population growth, we'll look at Richter scale and earthquakes. All of these are what are called logarithmic scales or exponential growth questions, and we can do some really cool, some really neat stuff. But that's in our future. However, it's going to take me about five lessons or four lessons of careful definitions and walking you to a point to get to this point. Homework. Uh, number one is rewriting stuff as a common base. We did that last class. Two is good. Three is good. Four, except look up, cross out F. Well, you know what? I take that back. I'll let you try it. F, though, not on test. I'm giving you that because in about uh, Christmas time, something similar to this will be what we'll be doing in trig. So I'll let you think about this one and wrestle with it. And anybody who can figure it out on their own will get a candy next class if they're the first ones to tell me about it. By the way, G and H. G, still fair game. H may be a little overkill in terms of level of difficulty on the test. This I would consider okay but nasty. This I would consider ah, a little bit past nasty. Okay. Um, six is good. Seven and eight. There it is. Now, if any of you have calculator and or workbook funds, I would love to 